First off, uh, it's great to be here and be back uh, with all you guys tonight. Uh, I want to say a special congratulations to all you inductees. It's an unbelievable honor uh, for you guys to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. This is a special place. When Coach called me to tell me he was going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, uh, you know, I knew that time was coming for him. But to ask me to be his presenter was very appreciative. So great to be a part of this night with him. Um, I'm very humbled and honored uh, to be a part of this night. Uh, did that fly out? Yeah. <laughs> so, thank uh, Coach has obviously been my mentor. Uh, started with Coach when I was 22, 23 years old uh, at Centenary College. And when you look back, you never would have dreamed that the, his career would end giving an induction speech and presenting him to be in the Hall of Fame at such a unbelievable basketball school and unbelievable university. And so uh, I'm really, really proud to be here tonight and be a part of that. You know, when you look back, I know his stats better than he does. Uh, and that's what you're supposed to do, I guess, when you're an assistant for him for 12 years. But he's only one of few coaches that led three different programs to the NCAA tournament. One of few coaches that have won three different regular season championships at three different schools and then had the all time season single wins and most in regular season at three different schools as well. And so that's that's an unbelievable accomplishment there. Uh, I remember being at Tulane. I was at Tulane University and it was during Hurricane Katrina and that was a rough year uh, in a lot of ways. A lot of people went through a lot of different things that year and uh, his wife called me and said hey I think coach is getting a Murray State job. Uh, he'll call you tonight give you the details you know, are you ready to go? And I'm like, I'm ready now. I'm ready to get it. So I look at the roster, which anybody's going to do right away. And man, they got nine guys back. Man, they just got beat by North Carolina NCAA tournament. We got all these guys back. Shoot, we're rolling, man. I got to get up there, man. We're going to be really good. So I get up there. Coaches, I talk to coach. He's like, man, only thing they got in Murray now, Cracker Barrel and Applebee's. That's it, man. He said, but they got good basketball and they got great support. So I get up there. We get up here, man, and our roster is down to three guys for a lot of different reasons. And then Darren Boatwright walks in my office, and he's like, just so you know, we had that losing season here in about 20 years. So season we start out 0-3. We go out to California to St. Mary's. We're 0-3. Neil Bradley, Kenny Roth, they're already ready to ship us out of here. And um, we were fortunate to be able to have a winning season that year. But four years later, and they just touched on an introduction, coach led a team to a 31-5 record and probably one of the greatest moments in, in Murray State history when Denaro Thomas hit that shot to beat Vanderbilt. And then he brought us on the brink of the Sweet 16 where we led Butler with four minutes to go two minutes ago, and Isaiah had a shot from three to, to, to go to the Sweet 16. And you think about, I always, you know, the AD that hired me, he's like, hey, I know you'll be good in year one, but where are you going to be in year four? And when you look at where he was in year four, setting all those records, you know, going 31 and five, and then that, that shot is kind of shot heard around the world. My wife, who's my girlfriend slash soon to be fiance at the time, they're running around Callaway Middle School. Uh, everybody knew where they were when that shot went in. But I really believe this. This has been the best decade in the history of Murray State basketball. There's no question about that. And that be it began with Coach and the foundation that he built on and off the court. And it's still going on today with Coach McMahon winning three of the last four OVC titles, beating Marquette in the NCAA tournament, and having guys obviously like Josh, Shaq, and Tevin here over the last couple of years. But you look at this last 10 years, it started with Coach's teams in 2010. I was fortunate to be a small part of it, and obviously Coach Max doing a phenomenal job today. You know, working with Coach, you got to do a lot of different things. I was responsible for a lot of things. It gave me an opportunity to be ready for when I got my opportunity to be a head coach. But what I learned from Coach the most is you how to lead with humility through good and bad, how to be faithful in your walk with the Lord, how to be a great husband and father, how to build men within your program and prepare them for life, and that you can win in this profession doing things with integrity, doing things the right way, and having a balance and putting your family first. In our 12 years together, we are part of six championships.
He's had an amazing impact on me and my family. And he's provided, he's provided a lot for me. over the years. But within those championships in those 12 years, really the greatest moment with him and the greatest memory that I have, uh, and it shows what kind of man he is, is in 2016, 2015, I got the Iowa State job and the Big 12 SEC Challenge. Of course, we got to go play Texas A&M. They're really good. He went on to win the SEC that year, go to the Sweet 16. He had Alex Caruso, Daniel House, we were really good. We went to the Sweet 16. We had George Niang, Monte Morris, and a host of other really good players. But he came by my hotel. I had my firstborn, Cass. <sighs> he came by the hotel the night before the game and visited. But after the game was over, I watched the press conference, because you always go and kind of listen to what the coaches say after the games. And coach didn't really talk about the games, or the game at all. This was easier or so with my wife. Uh, he talked about me and watching me grow as a man, as a father, as a husband, and as a coach. And that was a really cool press conference to hear. And that memory will always stick with me, uh, more so than the championships. So it's a great honor to introduce Hall of Famer Coach Kennedy. Great song. Yeah. It's unforgettable. It's so true. I'm the crier of the group, so y'all are in trouble. <laughs> um, I want to first recognize my wife, Mary, my daughter, AC, and Lexi, my daughter Lexi, and I wanted to make sure I got that out so I, I could get, not forget at the end. It's a pro move, so you need to be re always recognize your family. Um, Steve Prohm, what can I say about him? He, he worked with me for 12 years. It's the first job I gave him, he lived in a dungeon at Centenary College down in the basement. And he paid his dues, went from there to southeastern Louisiana where we won two championships. And then the rest is history. He's the best assistant I ever had. And, and to, have, to be successful, you gotta have good people behind you and around you. And thank you, Steve, because I couldn't have done it without you. Had good staff, Amir Abdur Rahim and Isaac Chu were a big part of it, our championships and so many other assistants. But when I, we first got the job here, I interviewed at Kentucky Lake at the lodge and I'd never been out here. And I was like, it was, they brought me in late at night and then I figured it out. They were wondering what they were trying to teach me. Um, but Later on that day, I got the job and, and accepted it, and I was supposed to meet with, with Darren Boatwright, the assistant AD, and we met, and we were going to discuss the team. And I'm like Steve. I'm thinking we're coming into a great situation. We've got they, – they just won the o, OVC championship and lost to North Carolina, like Steve said. So um, we're walking into a situation where we don't have to rebuild. <laughs> But Darren Boatwright came into the office and talked to me, and he was giving me an update on the roster and the team. And the first, first person he mentioned, Sean Witherspoon, best player, broke his foot against North Carolina. Don't know if he's going to be able to play next year. Okay, I said, all right, well, that's just one guy. Well, we can overcome that. Next best player, he got kicked out of school, got in trouble for like the fifth time, and he's out of here. And then I'm starting to worry, okay, that's two down, so give me some good news. Two next two players tested positive in the NCAA tournament. They were ineligible the next year, so you don't want them in the program. Okay, two down. All right, well, I'm starting to worry. Next two tra want to transfer. Coach and change, they're leaving. They're going back home. You may be able to recruit them back, but you may not be. Okay, well, tell me the good news. Well, the three, three scholarship players that you signed, they went out of that letter of intent, and they wanna, they're not coming. So 
I was just shaking my head. Darren walked out the office. I got on the phone and I called my wife, Mary. I said, we're out of here. Um, I said, they just had a coach, Coach Dana Altman, took the Arkansas job and uh, he went to, to Arkansas for three days and then he went back to Creighton because he backed out so I knew it was possible. And <laughs> so I call Mary and I say, I tell her we're out of here and as I'm talking to her, the television in the office is on and at the bottom of it it says, Billy Kennedy to be named next head coach at Murray State tomorrow morning at a 10 a.m. Co press conference. I'm thinking, oh, crap. <laughs> uh, I'm stuck, and, and, and I knew I couldn't get out of it. I, I'm a man of my word, and so I needed to stay. Um, as a, Proverbs 16.9 says, a man plans his course, but the Lord directs his steps. And so God had a different plan, and I'm very thankful of that. About two weeks later, Mary sh flew up from Miami, and um, we were looking for houses, and Kathy Copper was our real estate agent. We went in to the Crossfield subdivision, and I said, this is a nice subdivision. She takes us in the first house, nice house. I'm feeling pretty good about it. She tells me, now, Coach, I need to tell you one thing. This house is owned by Alan Ward. He's your athletic director. I don't know what's up. I don't know if he's trying to leave town or not, but it's for sale. We ended up buying the house, but I didn't say another word because I'm thinking, no team, no house, no, no Alan Ward, no AD, no winning. So the AD left, thought he was leaving, and the team wasn't in place. But fortunately, we were able to keep a couple of guys. Steve talked about it being three guys. It was actually four, three healthy guys. Tony, Tony Easley and uh, Tyler Holloway were, were good players for us and were, were good for us to build the culture. And so the first year we won 16 games and like I think Steve said, we had a winning season. That was a special moment. Next year we won 18 games. We got a little bit better. I think we finished third in the OVC. Third year we, we won 19 games. Got a little bit better. People were getting restless in Murray, but we were getting better. Fortunately, the next year we had the championship season. We won, we were 17 and one in, co in conference play, and we had a really good preseason. But the, one of the things, the, the losses came at the end of the year was against Moorhead State, and they had a kid named Kenneth Fareed, and they were a very good team. And to go to Moorhead already, is an accomplishment to get there. So once you get there and then you got to win the game, it makes it tough. So we lost to Moorhead State. And then the next week, we would play them in the conference tournament in, at Bridgestone Arena in Nashville. And you're feeling a little bit of pressure because the tournament is, it it's all comes down to the tournament. We had a great season, but if you don't finish strong in the tournament, then you don't, people think it's an unsuccessful season. Well, we get on the bus, we're going to play Moorhead State in the finals. We get on the bus, we get to the arena, we get out. And I have a ritual right before my wife and my daughter, they, they've been to every game except maybe three in, in all my years of coaching as a head coach. So I kiss them, I lean over, I kiss them and say good luck. They go to the stands. I go back to the locker room. Well, I go to kiss my daughter, she's five. She pulls on her coat and she says, Dad, we better not lose to them again. <laughs> so I'm thinking, what the? <laughs> uh, that's, that's, that's true pressure when you're five-year-olds on you. Uh, but fortunately, we, we went on and, and won the game and uh, the, went on to the NCAA tournament and hit the big shot, which was very important. But I say all this and saying we won a lot of games, we won a lot of championships, but it's not what, which, what makes Murray special. What makes Murray special is the people in the community. I want to recognize some people, and I got a list so I don't forget anybody, and I will 
won't be able to claim everybody because it took a, a, an army to, to help us be successful. But Pete Waldrop and Joy, I lived in their apartment, the penthouse suite in the backyard when I first got here. Get, Pete was a special fan and was big to me and took care of me and helped my transition to Murray go and I'm thankful for Pete. He's a great fan. Marty Futrell and the old Rat Pack, Dr. Hal Houston, Benny Purcell, Sid Easley, and anybody else who would climb in the suburban and follow us on the road. We had support on the road. Gerald Souter and Larry and Lindy. Can't say enough for what you guys have done for us and our program. The investment you made in these kids, being a family away from their families, helps make this place special, and thank you. Alan Ward, Darren Boatwright, Matt Kelly, who had the toughest job, academic advisor. Thank you for putting up with me, and more importantly, putting up with Steve, because he was always on top of their grades. He was a bear. Paul Bob, thank you for taking care of my wife on the road at games and always looking out for her. Eric Frederick, Dr. Blaylock, great medical team. Neil Bradley, Dave Winder, Will Aubrey, Racer Insider. Racer Insider was a special tool for us to, in recruiting. So we're thankful for Lindy and all the efforts you put into that. It's, it's a big deal. It helps your programs be successful, especially in Division I in recruiting. Ms. Cheryl Whitaker, Bill and Cheryl Whitaker. Cheryl was my secretary. Thank you for looking out and always having our back. And we weren't easy to deal with, but for the most part, you, you kept us straight. And I thank you for everything you've, you've done for us. And Bill, thank you for being a team together and supporting us. I developed some great friendships. Tim Perkins uh, provided us cars, but more importantly, provided me a great friend for life. Marty Futrell, Marty's here, just a loyal friend. Thank you for being a friend. Thank you for always being in my life and always being supportive. Randy Taylor, not only were you my, my dentist and kept my teeth right, you did a good job of being my friend and picking me up after a tough loss and helping me stay balanced. John Imes, who's not here tonight, but John, 10 years ago, I was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. John Imes drove from Murray to Texas and spent a week with me during the, while I was recovering. And to have a friend like that is, is, is gold, and I'm just thankful for John Imes. Ronnie Gibson, thank you for the text, keeping me encouraged during the year and all you've done. And you never let a battle stop you from doing that, and I appreciate your friendship. And there's so many other people here. Again, I can't, I got eight minutes and I'm trying to stay within the eight minutes, so I'm gonna, I can't recognize everybody. But lastly, I wanna recognize Matt McMahon. Matt's the head coach here and he's doing a hell of a job. And it's tough being a coach these, these days. Transfer portal and all the rules are making it even more incredibly tough. And he's got a big challenge ahead of him. He needs your help, he needs your support. Thank you, Matt, for what you're doing and the job you're doing. Um, I'm just humbled to be in the Hall of Fame. It means you're getting older, which is good. So <laughs> that's a good thing. But I'm very thankful and appreciative of this special place. Thank you, and God bless, and go racers.